Here I'm going to give you some information on the build fixture that I use whenever I'm building the wing kits. What you'll need to do in order to make yourself a wing fixture, and I'm going to show you step by step here how to do it. The first thing you need to do is separate the parts from your kit and you want to take the wing halves and lay them on, on the surface at which you're going to be mounting your fixture to. Uh, what you'll need to do is go ahead and turn the inside up, which is usually going to have marks, the writing, or it'll have the groove. The groove is on the inside. The top of the wing half is where the servo pocket is, and the two holes where the battery compartment is. So what you need to do is you need to go ahead and take your wing and put it together. Line the center up. And you can put some tape on it. In my case, I'm just going to put some masking tape because all I want to do is tape this together so it doesn't move around. So now I have the two halves taped together. The bottom is taped. So I'm going to adjust this on where I'm going to be building my fixture. So I'm just going to take it up about an inch here. This is a two foot by four foot sheet of plywood, so I'm going to go up an inch and put a mark. And then I'm going to go down here and go up an inch and put a mark. So now I have a line here, and you really need this inch because you need a little bit of material back here, and you'll understand why in a moment. So now I'm going to bring the trailing edge point and kind of center this in the piece of material and now I'm going to draw a line Okay, the first step is to go ahead and take your panels and tape them together so they can't move. And then set your wing down. I went up about an inch from the edge of my two foot by four foot board. And I traced around the wing. Now you want to pay close attention to the channel here that's been cut. And you want to find the center point of that channel and make sure that that's marked. And then remove your wing. Because now we need to do some layout with it. Okay, the next step is we want to find and mark up with a sharp pencil. I want to mark the center point here, oh, about an inch long, and the same thing up here, just come down about an inch. And then I'm going to do the same thing this side. I want to mark the center and the center up top there. And we're only marking about an inch across there and down here. Now, we want to go from this mark up a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to lay my ruler on the line. I'm going to cover the line. And then I'm going to draw a line all the way down here. And that line should be about a sixteenth of an inch ahead of the line that I had there. So we'll do the same thing on this side. So now I have a sixteenth inch ahead of the center point and of course my trailing edge uh, I've already got marked. Now, the other thing that I did was whenever I marked around the edges, I also marked the servo pockets. So now, we'll turn this over. The first thing you're going to need to do is, is have yourself six blocks of wood. These blocks of wood make up the internals of the fixture. So, this piece here, 14 and a quarter, you'll need two of those. This piece here is 22 inches long, you'll need two of those. And then this piece here, the front, is 23 and 3 quarter inches, and you'll need two of those. All right, let's take a closer look at the fixture here. We'll start with this piece here. From the bottom here up, 
is 15 16 and from the face here back would be 5 16 so you'll need two of those and that piece is 14 and a quarter inches long now notice I do have it back cut here and we have a mirror image because it's back cut over here uh, this here is just a straight 90 degree cut and that's fine alright the next one this one here let me move this tape so we can see the edge of it this is the center one and this is the, the most difficult one for you to cut because it has a taper in it and the taper starts at 5 8 of an inch high here and goes down to um, 7 16 of an inch on this end it only needs to be about a half inch wide so this part here is the critical part and this setting is the distance from the leading edge to where the spar is the spar rests over the piece of wood so you don't have to use a full width two before or you can get one tapered piece and then cut it in half and use half of it on this side and the other half over here but again the taper is 7 16 on this end and 5 8 on this end and the piece is uh, 22 inches long right here if you go from this edge this corner and step back an inch and a half and then you go from here and step back straight back two and three quarters that's where this lies but again you can uh, make sure you get it in the right spot by using the marks for the, the spar pockets because this rests right underneath the spar the leading edge piece it from the base up has to be 15 16 and again from the face back the step would be 5 16 one thing to note here in the front I've also cut out this pocket up in the front here that way that any buildup of glue can actually have room to go out because uh, you want to be careful not to have your wing actually glue itself to your fixture this edge right here is going to be on the trailing edge line this edge right here is going to be on that leading edge line that you marked and the center of this tapered piece is going to be in this on the same line as the spars so this uh, the spar pockets so this here actually rests right underneath the spar pockets so that is a look at the fixture now the way the fixture is used let me get you back up here in the tripod also one other thing is I have this piece here uh, you can set it back about a half inch mine is set back about an eighth but you can actually set it back a little bit more it won't hurt anything and uh, it needs to be a half inch high now to give you a few tips on using the fixture first thing I've done is I went and put a line on the front after I made sure the wing is set down in the fixture I put a line in the front here and the reason for that line is because I want to need it, I want the wing to set all the way down because you know you may be working and, and uh, wind up with something on one half let's just say for example now if I put the wing in here if you just look at that you you might not catch that this is up really high here but if you're looking for that line you will know that this is up high because you'll be paying attention to it so because I can't see the line I know there's either something underneath my fixture or on top of my fixture holding the wing up or I've left one of these in place now you can see that if I put the wing in here and press it down the wing it sets in there it's, it's I don't have to fight it to get it in but it's not going to fall out of my jig so that's the fit you're looking for if you can get that fit then you're fine okay now so I'm gonna take it back out of the jig you see it wasn't hard to pull it out of there didn't have to pry it out but yet it will it will fit in there and it fits snug all the way around so I would recommend that 
you screw your fixture down, your, your boards down, and then once you're satisfied with their location and, and you build a couple of wings, after you build a couple of wings and you're happy with where the placement is of them, then you can actually glue them in place. But I wouldn't glue them in place until you're sure that you're satisfied with where they're at. Now this piece in the back here, that holds this flat whenever you weight the, the wing down. So if I put some weight on here, this is not going to collapse because this is being supported by those pieces of foam at the back. Also here, we're supporting on the front and on the back here. So we're fully supporting the wing, and the wing fits in there both this way, and it will fit in here this way. So you can see there again, if we push it down, and it stays down, I can see the line here, I can see the line over here, so everything is right, and this wing fits in either way because it's symmetrical. So, now, on to these pieces here. I use these for two reasons. Number one, to put on the side force and to help put on the elevons. With the side force, I have one of these that's uh, cut and it's a, more or less a template for me. This would be the right side. This would be the left side. Now, notice it has top here and it says top here. The top is a little wider and you can set it ever how you want to set it, but I set it so that it's almost in the center, but I have it a little bit higher than I do low. It's off by maybe a quarter of an inch, and that's actually so that I have a little bit more sticking up than I do down. You can do it however. we found that the best way to, to, to put the side forces on is to have them real close to being centered. So, what I have is, in order to put these on, I use the jig, but notice that if I glued this right here, it would not be in the center. So, I use these pieces here. So these pieces here, they are, uh, this has been hot glued, uh, there's washers been hot glued in there, and they actually line that up. You can see that that jumps in place, that jumps in place, that jumps in place, and this jumps in place. So they they don't move around. They Once they get in place, then they're there. Now, what they do is they raise the wing up a little bit. So if I put the wing in here, remember the line? Now I should not see the line. And the wing is sitting down on those pieces. This also helps bring this closer to the right height. So if I hold this right here, I have, uh, I'm able to put a mark on the side force and glue it in place and because this is setting straight this would be setting on the fixture it's going to be straight uh, if I use a square block and put up against this to hold it in place while the glue sets then I will get it straight up and down so lots of good good reasons to make yourself a jig because whenever you put things together they go together uh, and they go together true. Now, one other thing about the yellow bonds. This is the yellow bond for this side. Notice that because the wing is elevated and this has been cut down, because it used to be this height, it's been cut down, it's actually the right height for this to go right up on there. So now, the key to installing the yellow bond and getting it so that it does not bind is whenever you install it, leave about a sixteenth inch gap between the front and the or the wing and the surface itself. So if you put this down here, then you put a little weight on it, and you can actually pull this back a little bit more. But the idea is if what we're looking for is that gap, that sixteenth inch gap. If you have that gap, then whenever you tape it off, run the tape down here and then fold this back onto itself and then you can take it out of the fixture, stand it up, and this would be setting like this, of course. Then you're going to run a piece of tape along this edge here, letting part of the tape stick off on this side and the other part stick off over here. So you center the tape on the three pieces and then wipe it down 
and uh, push the tape back onto um, the control surface and then whenever you open it back up now you have both the top tape and the bottom tape they're meeting in the seam which will actually make that seam really strong and uh, then you'll be done with the, sur the control surface after you've put on the control surface then you can put on the side force because I don't put on the side force first for the simple fact that if I put on the side force now I can't rotate this all the way over and bend it onto itself because see it's wanting to hit there so if I leave that off then I can put this on and fold it back so that I can put this piece of tape on. It's much easier to put the tape on while it's like this. One last thing about the, the uh, tips. Two things. You can cover both sides if you want to. Uh, I've started only covering the outside, not the inside. And I take this little fixture that I made and uh, I will put it on here and I will go around the inside and now I know exactly where if I put my glue on this black line then I can turn it over and put it on here and if I do that and then raise this up you can see that the black line is covered both on that side and on the other side so therefore I know where to put the glue to get the joint so that I have good contact all the way around so those are the the tips that I can give you as far as using the fixture and then the information that I give you about building the fixture um, the main thing is that you start with something flat and then of course what I've done also is added this piece here this piece here and this piece here because that way I can actually use this as my cut board so I can lay my material out and cut my uh, the covering whenever I go to cover the, the different parts I can lay the covering down here and, and I cut on this side and then whenever I'm ready to utilize the fixture and start building I can flip it over and I'm ready to build and again because I'm holding using magnets to hold these in place they don't fall off whenever I turn the wing over or turn the fixture over and to remove them I just slide them down and then slide them off and again I've got washers that are hot glued here and then I have magnets that I drill the hole put hot glue in the hole and then put the magnet in the hole put tape over it and push it down and let the uh, steel cool the glue back so that it was flush so this the glue does not stick up there it's actually smooth